well, yet again, Costa Rica into the semifinals of the Gold Cup. Their first semifinals, I believe, since 2009. Um, I said 2002, 2003. In an earlier video, I think I might have been wrong about that. But an own goal from Panama's uh, defender. Uh, I guess I have to give Panama credit for making a beautiful own goal. It was a great header, just very unfortunate to end up in the back of his own net. This was a very uh, tight affair that we thought it was going to be. It was very draw. It was very dross. It was very um, uninspiring. There weren't very many chances created on goal. Costa Rica had a couple of opportunities through free kicks. But the own goal at the end of the day was the decider. And for Panama, you have to feel bad for them because that's pretty much the worst way or one of the worst ways maybe the worst way to, to be eliminated through an own goal beating being the decider, the only goal in, in that match. Um, I thought they deserved more. I thought for most of the second half, they were the team that, that was on the initiative that was seeking to find a winner. Uh, if any side in this game looked content to take this to penalties, it, look, it looked like Costa Rica for the most part. Though Costa Rica did create very good opportunities uh, to get on the score sheet. Do they deserve to win this? I mean, maybe, but uh, it's sort of it's sort of been the trademark Costa Rica that we know uh, in Gold Cups, not just this one, but in Gold Cup history. They just uh, they're not a convincing team. They're not a very good team. Um, they are, you know what? They are a very good team. I th I think they're a very good team, but they just they under they underperform in Gold Cups. I don't think they are under good management in Oscar Ramirez. Uh, I think ever since he took the helm, they've been relatively poor. Their last couple of World Cup qualifying games were uh, almost ended in two losses for them. They should have lost at home to Panama. They barely uh, defeated Trinidad and Tobago. I think they will qualify for the World Cup, but because they're already in such a comfortable, comfortable position to do so. Uh, but I would not be surprised if Costa Rica closed out their World Cup qualification um, just hanging on barely by a thread. I wouldn't be surprised because they have not been very good. Their form heading into this tournament has been relatively poor, and it's it, it's carried on into the Gold Cup. We saw all four games. They, they do not look like the Costa Rica that we all know. But nonetheless, they're into the last four. That was the bare minimum requirement for them to do so um, because they this was a tournament where they really needed to step up after underwhelming in most of the last six or seven editions, maybe maybe more of this tournament. And, you know, them getting, getting to the semifinals, it's not really deserved in my opinion, but they made it and... Um, People who picked them as a dark horse to go on, not a dark horse, but a contender to go on to win, to win this tournament because the United States and Mexico, Mexico didn't seem to be prioritizing this Gold Cup. Uh, I think their case has become simultaneously weaker and stronger at the same time. Stronger in the sense that Costa Rica is now one of the four remaining teams, but weaker in that I just don't see if they come up like this, against the United States or Mexico, I think they get eat I think they get eaten alive. Sorry, that's just how I feel. But you but you know what? On that same token, maybe not, because the United States and their match against El Salvador, uh, they exposed our back line. We had a lot of holes. I thought that Eric Lehigh almost cost us an opening goal in the in the the first three or three or four minutes of this match. Three to five minutes. Um a horrible pass back. Howard have to, had to save us in the day. I think uh, Bonilla was on the end of that. It would have given El Salvador the early lead. And he did make amends for it later on by scoring a goal to bring the United States ahead 2-0. But does it uh, make up for the horrible defensive blunder, blunder in the opening stages of the game? I'm not sure. Because now I'm not sure whether or not he's a, trusty, he's a trustworthy left back. Um... This is going to be a relatively shorter video than what I usually make because my mind is kind of somewhere else right now. I need to, I need to 
go out and run some errands for a friend. Um, but for the United States, El Salvador, look, El Salvador, two things about El Salvador. Um, they were very dirty in this match. I believe with Josie Altador received a, a titty twister or a purple nurple. Uh, there were punches that were being thrown. There was a lot of time wasting and diving and uh, a lot of embellishment on several challenges. I thought the way that El Salvador conducted themselves in this game was very uh, disgraceful. It was low class. It was um, something that you should not see, but something that you often see in CONCACAF. And I hope the United States files a complaint against CONCACAF to uh, penalize El Salvador for something. I don't think it was the coach's decision to do this. I just think the players uh, opted uh, to resort to dirty tactics of playing very physical, uh, going to the ground way too quickly, way too easily. And uh, it, it's a wonder no one got red, red carded in this match. I think a few red cards should have been given out in this match. Um, how our U.S. team kept their composure and didn't black out and just decked one of those guys, I have no idea. But also at the same time, El Salvador exposed a few of our weaknesses and our frailties at back, uh, at the back. And I thought they were unlucky, as well as Panama was earlier, to, to not get a goal themselves. On the counterattack, the United States just looked uh, almost in shambles. El Salvador, through, with Bonilla and Zelaya linking up in that final third, I thought they should have gone ahead. Uh, and if not, they should have grabbed at least a goal in the second half to pull the game back to a one-goal margin to get themselves back into this game, but uh, they weren't able to. And I think we were really lucky. The United States was really lucky to not concede in this match because um, I could have seen El Salvador easily come back into this game, much like how Martinique came back uh, in their game against the United States to, to make it level at 2-2, two to two, if not for Jordan Morris grabbing the, the winner just a couple minutes later to make it 3-2. to two. So, you know, this game had a lot of shades of that Martinique game where we allowed our opponent back into the match and we almost got punished for it. Uh, we do that against Costa Rica or Mexico. I think uh, we're in a, in a world of trouble because I think those teams would put away their chances. Um, so that's all I have to say about that. My predictions for today's games. Uh, Canada, well, Mexico, Honduras, and Canada, Jamaica. <laughs> Mexico's going to get by, but guys, I think it's going to be a squeaker. I think Mexico will squeak by. The, I don't think this is going to be a straightforward day at the park at all. Honduras have not scored yet in this tournament, but historically, Honduras tends to match up well with Mexico. Uh, these are two teams that are very familiar with each other. They play a lot of World Cup qualifiers with each other throughout recent history. And Honduras knows how to hold its own against Mexico. Honduras is a very physical, very gritty team. And they look dangerous. I, I, I know they haven't scored any goals, but they keep promising to do it through Elisa up front and keep uh, Kyoto and Boniac Garcia. Uh, I don't know if Costly will come into the game. He might. He might be called up the knockout rounds, but I could see Honduras giving Mexico a lot of problems, and if Mexico turns up the same way they did against Curaçao, I could see Honduras pulling this off and getting into the semifinals. So, what's my prediction for this game? I'm thinking... Oh, man, this is hard to predict. This is really hard to predict. I'm thinking this game is, um, I think it's going to go to penalties. I do, because there's no extra time. And the last two times Mexico and El Salvador have met each other in Gold Cup knockout stages, they met in the semifinals. And, and I believe at least one of those games went to extra time, if not both. Uh, I know that one of them did for sure. I'm not sure about the other one. I think this is going to penalties. 90 minutes, it's going to penalties. I think Mexico will, will win. Uh, well, you want to hear a bold prediction? Not really bold, but uh, sort of a heart stopper. I think Honduras is going to score first. 
I think Honduras will score. Mexico will equalize. It'll go through penalties. It'll go to penalties. And Corona will make a few saves. And Mexico will just about get into the semifinals. Canada-Jamaica is also another very tight one. Not many people p predicted one of these two sides to reach the semifinals, but one of them has to. And it's because of the way the bracket is set up, where the runner-up of Group C plays the, run the runner-up of Group A. Uh, are, are either Canada or Jamaica one of the four best teams in CONCACAF? No. No, they're not. Um, arguably, I don't think they're anywhere near the top four teams in, Can in uh, CONCACAF. But one of them's getting to the semis. And Jamaica is the better team on paper. I expect them, uh, they should come out into this match expecting to win, to get to the semis, to set up that rematch with Mexico from the group stages, and also the rematch of the 2015 final. But you know what? I feel like momentum is on the side of Canada. I like the form they're in. I like Alfonso Davies. I like Scott Arfeld. I like how everyone... I, like, I think their chemistry is more coherent. It's more cohesive than Jamaica's is. Jamaica really has been struggling to score goals in this tournament. They scored a couple late on against Curacao, but against El Salvador, they were outplayed. Uh, Jamaica is a better team than El Salvador, and they were outplayed by El Salvador. They nicked a draw in that game. And Canada, they're going up against an opponent in Canada who's better than El Salvador. I still think this is going to be a tight game. I think that Jamaica's uh, physicality their overall ability to keep a clean sheet is going to provide a lot of problems for Canada. But I could see someone like an Alfonso Davies or uh, someone like Cavallini, who plays for um, Uruguayan local domestic club, uh, Peñarol. So, you know what? My prediction for this game... I think 1-0. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be 1-0 to Canada. I think it's going to be 1-0 to Canada, and I think the goal scorer is going to be somebody who hasn't scored yet in this tournament. I'm going to say Canada to go, th to go through to the semifinals, and what an accomplishment. What an accomplishment that would be for Canada. Um so yeah, I'm picking Mexico and Canada to go through to the semifinals. So thanks for watching, guys. Leave a comment below, like, subscribe. Who do you think's going through? What's your score line? Uh, will it take penalties to resolve any of these matches? Leave a comment below. Until then, guys, I'll see you tomorrow when I give my uh, reactions to... Well, no, actually, I'm going to give my reactions to the games later on tonight, I believe. Um, if I have time, if, I, if I'm able to. Uh, so... Till then, peace out, much love, see you later.